Shop in store today or online at harveynorman.ie for two-hour click and collect with our best prices guaranteed. Christmas gifting with Harvey Norman. Welcome back to the second half, everybody. Freddie, who's next? Tommy, our next guest is the incredible Stephen Ray. Good evening. Well, well, sit down there now. <laughs> it's like a before and after. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. How's yourself? Uh, going through phases, I think, with this particular uh, thing. of I kind of get a good three or four days and then a bad three or four days. and mm. you know, How about you? Well, this time last year I was facing a, a wonderful year, you know, a couple yeah. of uh, series, one in L.A., one in Spain, and they both had to be postponed. Yeah. I, I kind of... I always used to say, which might offend people, but I, if you live in Ireland, you need a door marked exit, you know. Mm. You yeah. know, it's it's not, you know, just after a while, it's lovely, it's great, but you need to get out and... But you probably only know that if you've gone through the door. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You might know that you need three weeks in California or a month in North Africa until you've gone there... I know. You know, that kind of a way. That's well, if somebody says to you, do you want to do a, a film that's in Bolivia or in... And you say, for sure. You don't, you don't read the script. You know, I'm going to go there, you know. So if you're working with, you know, your co-conspirators in, in the movie industry, it's, it's, it's fabulous, you know. I didn't realise until past year or so, uh, maybe that kind of the turbulence of parts of your life... Um, I have a huge interest in theatre yeah. and I'd be reading then about the starting up of uh, Field Day mm -hmm. and just the kind of the with Seamus Heaney and um, Brian Friel Seamus but, Dean yeah just the uh, yeah Tom Kilroy Tom Paulin yeah. another poet yeah and taking plays and opening them in Derry well, the, 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 big, the big thing seems to me that about theatre, I mean, you can put on plays anywhere and it can be a great production and everything, but the context of the, where you put the play on is vitally important. And in 1980, we restated theatre as a medium for change not because the, the plays were aggressively uh, nationalist or... Yeah. But they were... The story they were telling was to the right audience. And so people used to come to me after that and say, I've never been in the theatre before, you know. Mm. I thought the, the translations by Freel was a great play, you know, and it meant, it meant something. And I... Uh, also, didn't know that you were a Church of Ireland. You, no, I'm not anything. But were you born into a Church of Ireland family? No, my I was born into a non-religious family. Ah, I know that's very hard to say. In the, but I, I, I mean, I must say, one of the things that upsets me is when, people, oh, he's an Ulster Protestant. I'm not. And um, actually, I got married at the high altar in. Or my cathedral, which yeah. you can't do that if you're. <laughs> so you're saying a non-religious family? Well, they never. I never saw them in a church. They they didn't care. Were they academics? Not in the slightest. So it wasn't like they were coming from. No, they weren't coming from a notion like they weren't like your man. Dawkins or whatever his name is. Yeah. No. Um, Dick, no. Dick Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, my parents both left school at age 14 because that's... And, and me and my sisters were the first of our family ever, ever to go to third-level education. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and then I joined the Abbey as soon as I left university. 
I was there for a couple of years before I went to England. <laughs> I also didn't know until I watched the Dolores documentary. Um, well, I didn't see that, Tommy. Yeah. Deliberately, and I never will, you know. Um, uh, but my, my mother died the same way Dolores did. I heard that. I heard that. I'm so, so sorry, yeah. So I had a kind of a... Um, an, uh, even though I would be entirely unconnected to the politics of the situation, you know, and mm -hmm. the, but I had a kind of a... an empathetic reaction to the situation that she might have found herself in of course. coming towards the end, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, drama she, has found you. It, and that, I don't mean that in a flippant way because I've lived through part of it, but... Um, drama has found me, is that what you said? Yeah. Well, my father was an alcoholic and um, drank himself out of a job and we started moving around, you know, to mm. survive and everything. So I had that kind of, kind of drama, which is... Deeply, deeply upsetting if you're young, you know. Um, and then, strangely, I married someone who was so troubled, you know. But, mm. um, but look, you know, the, the, the North of Ireland was formed 100 years ago, 1920, wasn't meant to be a nice place for Catholics to live in, you know. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be a very uncomfortable place. So when it came to 1950 and my Aunt Dolores was born, it wasn't that long since the state was formed. and You might have expected troubles, you know. Mm. And for a sensitive person like her... Um, it was very tough, yeah. How much were you aware of when you were courting and getting married that... That she was an alcoholic? Not even that she's an alcoholic, but I suppose... Um, that she was in trouble. She masked it very, very, very well at the beginning because she came out of prison. I've never talked about this before, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, she came out of prison in, after eight years and how could she be anything but destroyed, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, but she masked it very well. And we were both at a stage in our life where we had missed some years because of, in my case, relationships that, weren't going anywhere and um, we both wanted children mm. in the end we had two sons mm. which have brought me intense happiness you know and this the great thing about the lockdown is that I've been with the boys in my house for basically a year and it's mm. been actually great I want to ask you about the IRA <laughs> and just the, um, I suppose n not many of us would have had the contact that you have had with them. And I, I, would I be, do you have a sense of resolution about where we are now? Well, somebody said to me today, an Englishman, um, Everybody in England is talking about United Ireland, you know. They, they, I don't know if that's true. I don't think everybody here is. But, um, um, you know, the, the, uh, the modern IRA, the 1968-69 the thing, came out of the civil rights movement. When, you know, we were all civil rights people. And then when the pogrom was, the attempted pogrom happened, all these guys were just saying, I've had it, I've had it, you know. And mm. There were no guns in Falls Road at that time, so. Um, and there were some people that I knew that I grew up with. I didn't, they weren't, didn't come from a Republican background or anything. Dolors did come from a very Republican background. Um, 
my my sense of when I you know the bits of work that I do up north um, is that we have so much in common with the unionists. Do you know we really do, we have an, an Irishness in common. We have. Uh, and, and my sense of it is that if we can tolerate people from Cork, <laughs> we, can to- <laughs> we can live with the unionists, you know. Ah, of course you can. I mean, you know. of course, it's it's just that, listen, the, the northern farmers know they want to, you know, they want to stay in Europe. They want all that. And it could work very well. Yeah. Uh, I hope, you know, I hope. Are you a sad man? Well, I suppose the old, the old face makes you think that, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> no, I was I was very um, I was a very cheeky, happy child, and then you know when you live in a house with a war going on. I mean, not the troubles, the yeah, the marriage war. You become a bit grieved, don't you? And, um. But I got out of it and I went and did the acting and loved it, you know. So. Yeah. Um, I'm just just that, that sense of if you're um, the war zone of the home. Hmm. Um, in what way do you think that you you carried it? Like, would it be in a in a uh, Always, in a weird way, always seeking to be in relationships that don't quite work in order to kind of s- still be living in that Maybe. fractured dynamic or something. Well, that's very profound of you to say that. Is that too... Most, uh, that's, well, I'm, I'm great well, mostly theory. they don't work, you know, so it's... Yeah. Um, um, and maybe I'm embracing that rather than... I don't know how to make them work anyway. It's, uh, you know. Sure, I'm nearly done now anyway, you know. What kind of, what kind of women do you like? Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I like a wide variety of them, you know. But, um... <laughs> I don't know. I, Do you like women's company? Like? I love women's company. You see, I was brought up in a house with uh, five women. My grandmother, my mother, and three sisters. And the father in the pub. So I was, and I was the only son. Mm. So um, I think I do like them. And I get on very well with them. And so I like theatre because there's a lot of women around there, very intelligent women. And... Um, yeah, but I can't. I I must say the 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 marriage was so destructive in many ways that I can't. Um, I'm not rushing into anything, you know. When you say the marriage, you mean to dollars? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Never talked about this before in this kind of setting, but. Mm. Um, the thing is, she was very funny, very literary, very, you know, my my two guys have wonderful vocabulary, which a lot of that comes from her. Mm. And um, she just, just wasn't able, you know, just wasn't able. Um, I, I get the the sense from Dolores that there was kind of no more than my own mother but for entirely different reasons kind of she was been it's like some some people have wolves inside them that don't stop howling and sometimes the only way to stop them howling mm. is through drink and uh, uh, medicine yeah you know um, yeah was there a, did a point come where you would say I, I I cannot save I can't I can't stop those dogs. Yeah, of course, and um, 
it happened over a period of time, but I, I r read um, a piece in the paper where a woman, a mother, had to get her son, who was an addict, to leave the house. And she said, and it, until the addict leaves the house, nobody is going to get any better. Nobody's going to get better. Mm. And I cut it out and I kept it and reminded myself of it all the time. That's a mother putting her own son out of the house, you know. Mm. And I had to negotiate a separation. I mean, I got her a house and everything. And, um, and um, it wasn't just to save myself, it was to save everybody. It was to save the boys as well. Mm. Mm. God be good to them. Like I mean, it's it's. I don't mean that as it, it seems like the appropriate thing to say. For yeah. for your Dolores and for my mam, you can yeah. say God be good to them. Like you know they, yeah, they suffered and and they might may have caused suffering, but nobody suffered as much as they did. No, exactly. Do you know, so. and they gave she gave you life and she gave my boys life. Yeah, and um, that's the biggest thing in my life is that. We had them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've also had to accept the fact that you earn your living on the road. I remember you came to a show that I did in Vancouver one night. I did, yeah, yeah. And we were chatting about it afterwards and uh, I was kind of struggling with being on the road. Yeah. And you were just saying, that's our life. But you, you seem to have come to an acceptance of it, which I haven't. Oh, no, well, it is our life, yeah. I mean, I know it's not good for things, you know. I used to say to dollars, I used to say, it's just another hotel, you know. There's nothing. But it is what I chose to do, and it, it became a very good life for me, you know, and I was doing very good films, and um, it's a huge thing to do, and that that's what you're living when you're doing it you're not living anything else you couldn't you couldn't dream of it you're you're feed you're eating for the evening you know yes yeah. you're not and um not great for the school run no well then i stopped working to do the school run for a while you know because oh. but it's not good for the school run yeah. but then there is a war between art and if i'm allowed to call it art and the bourgeois lifestyle, isn't there? There really is. And it drives the non-artists mad. Uh, how have you passed the time over the past year in terms of... Um, well, I haven't been as um, uh, hard-working as I should have been. I thought I should be learning more Irish and I should be doing lots of things. And I, I'm supposed to be writing some class of a memoir... And uh, I just found I got a bit sluggish. But when the weather was really nice, we planted stuff in the garden, me and the guys, you know, and some native oak trees and things. And it was it was a great pleasure, you know. Mm. A, you know. So I did that, and um, we just we spent a lot of time together, and I very much appreciate that time, you know. Yeah. Are you going to have to investigate all part of what we've been talking about tonight again for the memoir? Is that? Oh yeah, I wasn't ever sure that I was going to talk about my marriage or anything in the memoir, but it, and it's inevitable, I suppose. But I, um, there's a lot to do, you know. There's a lot there that we haven't talked about, but um, yeah. you know, because I, I mean, I. You know, there's Beckett. I worked with Beckett and I worked with Pinter and I, I worked with Sam Shepard. And those are kind of the major playwrights of my of my time, you know. What what was the Beckett play? Endgame. And who were you in Endgame? Uh, Clove. The fellow doing all the running around? Yeah. Yeah. You should play that. You'd be good at Beckett. Yeah. I often feel I have the, I have the wrong accent for Beckett. No, no, your accent's fine for Beckett. 
really, because when you hear Barry Mc, uh, Jack McGowan and oh, Jack is great. And Barry. Jack is the greatest. I played his role in in Endgame because he unfortunately died. But Jack gave me my first job in London in an OKC play, and I was very very uh, attached to him. And then when he died, they offered me his part in that thing, which was massive for me, you know, and Beckett was there and in the rehearsals and everything. Mm, how, how tall would you say he was? Beckett? Yeah, yeah. Huge! No, um, <laughs> um, I think he was a wee bit taller than me, I think, but, um, and, and, and Ham was played by the great Pat McGee, you know, oh, from wow. Armagh, great, great actor. These were, you know, the Irish were great at Beckett. Mm. And Beckett knew it, you know. And did you find when you were um, uh, sitting with Beckett that it was too big an event for you to be able to relax into it? Yes, of course. But he was an ado- adorable man, Beckett, and great man for a drink, and very kind and very thoughtful, and wouldn't say a bad word about about you. You know, he was mm. great. It was great. Mm. Mm-hmm. Loved him. How come? Hmm? How come? I loved him. Mm. Well, he was so... Uh, he was so brilliant and and so kind. And so interested in people, you know. There was a lighting guy there that he took to very much and used to come in early and just sit and talk to him in the stalls. Mm. He'd come in and find him and he'd... You know, he wasn't... He wasn't this, he may have been the great literary figure to the rest of the world, but he wasn't for himself, you mm. know. Yeah. Mm. We have to finish. I suppose so, it's gone on forever. I hope you don't mind me wearing a scarf. Well, I noticed I'm, you were wearing one the yeah. other night when I saw the show. I'm more threatened by your hair than your scarf. Well, this is because I haven't cut it in the whole year. Normally, I only cut my hair when I'm working, yeah. so I haven't been working. Suits you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, Stephen. It's an absolute pleasure, Tommy. Thank you so much. That sound, that boom, boom, that's life happening right now. One beat after the next. What's next is what lay healthcare do. Always ahead of your next boom, boom. Giving you access to more hospitals,